Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video we are going to dive into the preparation of alcohols. Three are the most common ways to prepare alcohols. First by hydration of alkenes, second by reduction of carbonyl compounds that we haven't mentioned up until now, and third by using the Grignard reagent. Let's see them through examples. So let's start with hydration of alkenes first. We had two methods, hydroboration oxidation that yields a non-Markovnikov product and uh, oxymercuration demercuration that yields a Markovnikov product. So, what we had? By giving a non Markovnikov alcohol that the name is trans 2 methyl cyclopentanol. Okay? Because methyl is at the position 2. 1, 2. Okay, oxymercuration, demercuration. Here we have the formation of 1-methyl cyclopentanol, okay? That occurs according to the Markovnikov rule, or in other words, to the more substituted carbon, the hydroxy group. Next, what we saw, we saw the formation of diols. We had two methods. The first one with osmium tetraoxide yields a cis diol, and the one with metachloroperoxybenzoic acid yields a trans diol. Okay, let's do the first one first. So finally we have the formation of a cisdiol. Uh, let's move further. If we use metachloroperoxybenzoic acid, we are going to yield a transdiol. If you want to name this one, is transmethyl 1 2 cyclopentindiol. Another way to prepare alcohols, this occurs only before tertiary alcohols, is uh, starting from a, from a tree substituted carbon. The second way to prepare alcohols is by reduction of carbonyl compound to yield alcohols. Reduction first, we are going to start with the reduction of aldehydes and ketones. If we treat an aldehyde, we haven't learned yet naming, but anyway, I'm going to mention here propanol. Uh, with sodium borhydride in ethanol solvent, and the second step is uh, acidification of the solution or protonation, we are going to yield primary alcohols. In this case, it's going to be propanol. Primary alcohols. If we start from a ketone with sodium borhydride, we are going to yield a secondary alcohol. Hmm? Cyclohexanol in this case. Another way to reduce aldehydes and ketones is by using another reducing agent that is lithium aluminium hydride. Lithium aluminium hydride is way more reactive than sodium borhydrate. We are going to see below the difference. Okay, uh, you have to know that lithium aluminium hydride is a selective in a sense that is not going to reduce the double bond, it's going to touch only the carbonyl group. And it's going to reduce that, in this case, as a secondary alcohol. If you want to name this, is 2-cyclopentanol, because this is at position 2, the double bond. In terms of mechanism, I'm not going deep at this point. From the name, sodium borhydride, lithium aluminium hydride, is a hydride that is a hydrogen charged negatively, that is going to attack the carbon at the carbonyl group and is going to form as an intermediate and alkoxide ion and after it is going to be protonated by acidification to yield the alcohol. Let's move further now to the reduction of carboxylic acids and esters. In this case, with carboxylic acid, we and esters, we must use lithium aluminium hydride. They do not react with sodium boron hydride. They need a more reactive reducing agent. So, but in this case, 
you have the medium or the solvent is going to be ether because lithium aluminum hydride in water is going to explode. So what we are going to yield? We are going to yield again, in this case, a primary alcohol. Here you have to keep in mind that those two hydrogens here comes from the lithium aluminum hydride, from this hydrogen here, okay? It requires two for, for carboxylic acids and for esters, as we are going to see above, below. So uh, now, if you treat this compound, this benzoic, this carboxylic acid with sodium borohydride, the reaction is not going to work. Now, if we treat an ester, again, it's going to react and to form an alcohol. Uh, sorry, I forgot something, because this is a phenyl. Now, here at this example, you have a ketone group and an ester group. If you treat with sodium borohydride, the ester group is going to be untouched, but the ketone is going to be reduced to the alcohol. Okay, keep this in mind. Right? So, the ester group is, going, is not going to react with sodium borohydride. If it were lithium aluminum hydride, both the secondary alcohol here and the primary alcohol here, alcohol here was going to be formed. Okay, let's move to the third case, Grignard reactions. The Grignard reagent is an alkyl halide that is treated with magnesium in ether solvent, and this is the compound that is called re Grignard reagent. The mechanism is, this, is similar with hydride above. The negative charge from the Grignard reagent is going to attract the Carbon at the carbonyl group is going to form an alkyl oxide. After that, we are going to have protonation in, a, in a acidic medium, and we are going to form alkyls. But here, in difference from before, we have, have also addition of other carbons. This R here, it can be primary, secondary, tertiary, alkyl, aryl, and or vinylic. And X can be chlorine, bromine, iodine, and halogen. Now, if we start from a formal aldehyde, and treat with a Grignard reagent, we are going to form primary alkyls. Be careful, you have the addition of this carbon, right? So you have more carbons at the final product. In this case, this is going to be what? This is going to be cyclopentyl methanol. Okay, cyclopentyl methanol. Let's move further. Now from an aldehyde, ethanol in this case, we are going to form secondary alkyls. Right? If we treat a ketone with the uh, Grignard reagent, it's going to form tertiary alcohols. So this is primary, secondary, and with a ketone, you are going to form, and with a ketone, you are going to form tertiary alcohols. In this case, it's going to be one methyl cyclohexanol. Okay, let's move further. Now with esters, again, you are going to form tertiary alcohols, but you have to keep in mind that you need two equivalents of Grignard reagent. And when we are going to displace here from this reaction, the final product is going to inherit a carbon with one CH2CH3 and two CH2CH3 that comes from the Grignard reagent and the alcohol, right? This is going to be the final product. A carboxylic acid with Grignard reagent, the reaction is not going to give the desired product, instead it's going to give a salt, because it's going to be protonated. So the product that you are going to get is going to be, right? Instead of having the alcohol. There are some limitations to Grignard reagent, if R, that is substituent, is going to be a hydroxy group, is going to be a carboxylic acid, amine, sulfide, it's going to get protonated. So it's not going to give a desired product, it's going to give a salt. But if R is one of those groups here, like aldehyde, ketone, ester, etc., Grignard reagent react with those groups. So the Grignard reagent react with itself. That's why it's not used on these cases. Now, finally, some homework. Leave them in the comments below. What is going to be the product from this reaction in point A and what is going to be the product from this reaction in the point B? Okay, let's go back to the normal view. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to see you in the next video that is going to be with the reaction of alcohols. Peace.